Hi folks and welcome to part one of a two-part series on your introduction to the human skeleton. The adult human skeleton has 206 bones. That might sound like a lot to remember, but think of it this way. One hand has 27 bones in it and a lot of those bones have the same name. The bones of the feet have 26 bones each and a lot of those have the same name as well. So it's really not too, too difficult once you get started. But before we start listing off the names of some of these bones, let's divide the skeleton in its two major divisions. The first division we'll look at is the axial skeleton. Then we'll look at the appendicular skeleton. Those are the bones of the arms and legs. That will come in the second video. The axial skeleton has three divisions itself. We start with the skull, the vertebral column, and then the thorax, otherwise known as the rib cage. Looking at the skull, there are 22 bones in all. Only one of them actually moves. As you might know, it's the mandible or the jawbone. The skull itself is divided into two subdivisions, the cranial region, which houses and protects the brain, and then the facial region, which supports the muscles and the features of the face, such as the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. There are eight cranial bones. Here they are in this picture here. We have one ethmoid bone, one sphenoid bone, one frontal bone, which actually comes from two bones that fuse together early in childhood, two parietal bones, two temporal bones, and one occipital bone. All of those are flat bones with, which protect the brain. Here are the facial bones. There are 14 of them. You've got two nasal bones, two zygomatic bones, a vomer, a maxilla, which is actually two bones, a mandible, two inferior nasal concha, and two more sets of bones that are difficult to see from this view are the lacrimal bones and the palatine bones. We'll see those in later slides. Part of the skull are the teeth. Now the teeth themselves are not bones. They're made up of a different tissue known as hydroxyapatite. It's the hardest tissue made by the human body. There are 32 adult teeth, not including the wisdom teeth. The wisdom teeth are actually molars. We'll take a closer look at these in class and define what each of the different types of teeth do. A lot can be determined about the lifestyle of an organism by looking at its teeth. The next region is the vertebral column. The vertebral column has five regions, each divided by their unique vertebrae. First, we start up, up at the top with seven cervical vertebrae. Those are your neck vertebrae. There are 12 thoracic vertebrae that support the rib cage or the thoracic cage. There are five lumbar or lower back vertebrae. There's one sacrum made up of five fused bones and anywhere from three to five coccyx bones that also get fused together as you, as you age. Your coccyx bones are your tail bones. The main job of the vertebral column is to protect the spinal cord and support the main axis of the body. You'll notice some natural curves as you look at the vertebral column on its lateral view here. Now we describe these curves from an anterior view, that is, if you're looking at the skeleton face on. The thoracic region has a convex curve anteriorly. That means it curves out towards you as you're looking at it anteriorly. The thoracic curve is concave anteriorly. The lumbar is convex and the sacrum is concave. All of these add up to a central spring of the body which act as a central shock absorber as you, as you move about the world. In addition, in between each individual vertebrae is an intervertebral disc made up of fibrocartilage, which also adds some shock absorbency to the, to the spinal cord. And the last region is the thoracic cage. The main job of the thoracic cage is to protect the vital organs inside, the heart, the lungs, and the major blood vessels that support the heart. There are 12 pairs of ribs in all. Seven of them are what we call true ribs. 
They're called true ribs because each of them have their own costal cartilage which connects them to the breastbone. The next region has three pairs of what we call false ribs. Now they're real ribs. They're only called false ribs because they share costal cartilage connecting them to the sternum. And then there are two pairs of floating ribs that have no cartilage on them whatsoever. What completes the thorax is the sternum or the breastplate. The sternum has three segments. The top which is the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process which sticks down into the abdomen. The costal cartilage provides flexibility to the rib cage and allows it to expand when you take in a deep breath. In addition, in between each rib are what we call intercostal muscles, which help the rib cage to expand. In fact, one of the secondary functions of the rib cage is to aid in breathing, taking in deeper breaths as you expand the rib cage. So that's it for part one, your introduction to the axial skeleton. Stay tuned for part two, the appendicular skeleton. These go by quickly, but in truth we'll spend an awful lot of time in lab class looking at individual bones from each of these regions and learning the names of those features. So be patient and I hope you have fun. If you've got any questions, bring them to class and we'll see you there. The foot bone's connected to the leg bone. The leg bone